It's 843 acres of open space on a very crowded Manhattan Island. But Central Park still has its secrets, and Faith Saley came across one that may surprise you. Most people who walk through Central Park, from tourists to lifelong New Yorkers, have no idea of the history under their feet. Where are we? We are in the heart of Seneca Village. This is where the churches would be nearby, the schools would be in this area. In 1825, a 25-year-old African-American shoe shiner named Andrew Williams bought this land, two years before slavery was abolished in New York. We'll return to his story later. More free black Americans followed, fleeing the disease and discrimination of downtown. And together, they created a bustling settlement of their own, known as Seneca Village. Seneca Village was a place of opportunity. It was a reaction to racism. Cynthia Copeland is president of the Institute for the Exploration of Seneca Village History and has spent decades uncovering its story. There's a chance that Seneca Village was part of the Underground Railroad? There is, and it's speculative, but highly probable. Why do you think the history has been untold and unknown until relatively recently? The victorious are the ones who get to write the stories. These were people who were forgotten. And it is unfortunate that the story was hidden for so long, uh, but it's great that the story is now has emerged. Much of the story is an enduring mystery, but an archaeological dig unearthed hundreds of artifacts from the villagers' middle-class lives. We found lots of beautiful bottles, a shoe that was probably the size um, that was used by one of the children, and one of the students just started to cry. Seneca Village was home to the largest number of African-American property owners in New York before the Civil War. And because those black men possessed property, they had the ability to vote. Irish and German immigrants moved in too, and white and black villagers attended church side by side. But when New York City elites wanted to create a park that rivaled those of Europe, they were drawn to the middle of Manhattan. There was a smear campaign that was created in the media. We've got to get rid of all those people that live in the park that shouldn't be there. They are tramps, squatters, and thieves. This is the kind of language that they used. In 1853, the city used eminent domain to take control of the land. In all, about 1,600 residents were displaced, including nearly 300 from Seneca Village. People were not happy, and they put up a fight. But to no avail. Seneca Village lasted only 32 years. Central Park was created and the rest is history, but an incomplete history until recently. A monument to a prominent Seneca Village family is underway, and the Central Park Conservancy installed an outdoor exhibit. So we believe that this was the main water source for the village. This was a natural spring that has existed for a really long time. Marie Warsh is a historian for the Conservancy and gives tours of the landscape. The reservoir was here. It seems like Central Park has always existed. So I think people are really amazed that there were people living here. One of the questions I think a lot of people have is, where did everybody go? Who are the descendants? That was the question. What happened to the people? Where did they go? And I said, well, I'll take on the job of looking them up. Cal Jones, Manhattan Borough Historian Emeritus, has spent thousands of hours researching the residents, starting with Andrew Williams, the shoe shiner. He was a visionary. So I can see him building the house off of the road. You can see this is his, the two, two lots. I looked at the Andrew Williams Seneca Village as sort of like a puzzle. Now let me put the pieces of this puzzle together to see this beautiful picture. And last year, that picture became a lot clearer when someone with a familiar name heard about his quest and reached out. It almost felt like I uh, found a treasure. 
Andrew Thomas Williams IV is the great-great-great-grandson of Andrew Williams. He and his wife Mariah didn't realize the connection to Seneca Village until a researcher messaged them on Facebook. And suddenly, the history of Seneca Village became the history of their family. My great-grandfather had a music school where he taught music, and it made the whole Andrew Thomas Williams line so much better, because I really, truly now get that connection. It's not just a name. How did that feel to you? It gave me a sense of being and a sense of pride. So I walk a little taller, and I feel a lot stronger. When they toured Seneca Village, they just had to share the news. I remember uh, the tour guy saying, we haven't been able to locate any descendants. <laughs> and so then I said, descendants right here. <laughs> oh, they started clapping. They was excited. They were like, wow. Yeah. And all we can do is honor the past. And nothing covered can ever get healed. One day, Andrew Thomas Williams IV says he'll pass along this family heirloom to his oldest son, a ring with an A that belonged to his great-grandfather, a precious reminder to keep telling the story. There are others out there. Yeah. The story just has to be put out, and I think uh, then we'll learn a whole lot more than what we, the little that we know now. Exactly. And knowing the whole story, man, wow. That, that's got to be amazing when that comes out.